This talk is based on papers published in this journal, where you can find most of the details. I will not have time to talk about them today. First, what's the motivation for this work? Black holes are certainly the most interesting and intriguing solutions of financial equations. And on the other side, uh, according to the present knowledge, extra dimensions seems to be necessary in an ultimate theory of financial physics. But unfortunately, for a long time, we weren't really able to study those high dimensional black holes in these models because extra dimensions were so tiny, so we needed quantum gravity, gravity in order to describe it. However, that changed recently with the introduction of so-called brain holes. That's basically an idea that we live on a brain embedded in a high dimensional space-time. And in the context of this most this model, we can talk about a large extra dimensions, where by large I mean much larger than the fundamental length scale theory. In this context, we can talk about high dimensional black holes as a classical solution to match these equations, so we don't need quantum gravity in order to describe them. And as the probably the most interesting and exciting possibility, we can talk about black hole production <coughs> accelerators. This is the outline of today's talk. First, I will present you with the basic facts about black holes and extra dimensions. Then I will introduce variable models. And then I will discuss high-dimensional black holes in the context of these variable models. And I will spend just about equal amount of time discussing two possible cases, black holes on the brain and black holes in the public. First, just quickly, what is a black hole? Laplace in the 18th century, in the context of the Newtonian theory, noticed that if a massive object is compact enough, then for certain range of parameters it can happen that not even light can escape such an object. And under these simple assumptions, the gravitational energy of attraction between the compact object of mass m and test object of mass small m is greater or equal to the kinetic energy of a test object, then not even light can escape such an object. And from this condition, we can derive the gravitational radius of such an object, and that's just the which is over c squared. Then Einstein, in 1915, formulated his famous general relativity, and within a year, Schwarzschild derived his famous solution, Schwarzschild metric. At the time when he derived the solution, he didn't really know what is described by his solution, but it was apparent that the solution is very interesting. At r equals zero, the metric is similar. There is another singularity at, at r equal 2 gm over c squared. It's very interesting that the horizon radius coincide exactly with gravitational radius derived by Laplace under these very simple assumptions. And at r equal r horizon, t and r exchange their roles. So the same force which pushes us through time in our everyday life, and we cannot go backwards to time, <laughs> how hard we try, the same force, once we cross the horizon of the black hole, it pushes us toward the center, toward the singularity, and we cannot turn back no matter how hard we try. There are several different types of black holes. First type are black holes formed in the collapse of stellar matter. Such black holes are endpoints of stellar, stellar evolution, and they can grow uh, later by subsequent mergers and accretion. A mass range of such black holes is from a few solar masses to a billion solar masses, like a black hole that inhabits and a 